All right, well, we're in the truck. We have the open trailer hooked up and we are going on a little road trip. So the open trailer is empty because we're going up empty handed and we should be coming back with a car. Now we are going to buy what is for me a very, very special car. In and of itself, it's pretty special in the sense that it is completely original and unmodified. I know the entire history of this car. I know where it's been pretty much all its life. It has never been modified. It has never been messed with. It is still bone stock and original, which is getting very, very hard to find with these cars. Now, more so than that though, this car has a ton of sentimental value to me because this was my grandfather and grandmother's car. I mean, they had this car pretty much when I was born. My grandmother daily drove this thing. She picked me up from kindergarten in this car. We'd go on family trips and I remember sitting in the floorboard because there weren't enough seats for me and my cousins. So I have a ton of history with this car. I've wanted this car since I was a kid. I mean, this car is really what sparked my love for cars. It was the first car that I can recall ever really wanting and being a kid daydreaming about having my license and driving this thing and sitting in it and making vroom vroom noises, you know? And I've been trying to buy this car for the last five years uh, to no avail. And finally, I got them to cave. They're gonna sell it to me. Uh, the car has been sitting for a very long time. I haven't seen it in about 12 years. I know it hasn't ran in at least 10. I have no idea what condition it's in. I don't know what we're gonna be walking into when we go look at this thing. It could be better than I think. It could be worse than I think. But at the end of the day, for me, it really doesn't matter because of what the car is and, and the value behind it to me, whatever it is, we're gonna take it, we're gonna fix it, we're gonna make it right and put this thing back on the road and get to enjoy this car that I've wanted since I was six years old. So I'm really excited about this. I've wanted one of these cars for a long time, just holding out to the day I could try to get my hands on this car. And finally, today's the day. Well, technically tomorrow. The car's in Georgia, we got an eight hour drive, so we're gonna cruise up there. We're gonna get a hotel so we can go first thing in the morning because I imagine it won't be very straightforward getting this car on the trailer. I'm sure there will be some debacles involved and some running around getting parts and tires and things, but one way or another, we're gonna be leaving with this thing on the trailer, bringing it back home and uh, seeing what we have to work with. So I'm excited, but that being said, I got a long drive ahead of me, so I'm gonna settle in and get to it. So heading north out of Florida, pretty much anywhere but up the east coast, and you're taking I-75. So I have made this trip, or a trip similar to it, dozens and dozens of times. Now that makes it a little bit boring, a lot of the same old sites, but it makes for a pretty easy trip, especially when you're doing a solo mission like this. So we made a couple stops along the way, hit some rest areas, you know, take a little break here and there, and we found our way to Atlanta. Now where we are going is actually a suburb of Atlanta. It's noon in Georgia, and this is actually my hometown. This is where I was born, where I grew up as a kid. So we made it to our hotel, checked in, got some work done, and then got up bright and early to head out to look at the car. Now, I did have one stop I wanted to make along the way, and that was my childhood house. So I lived here from the time I was born till the time I was six or seven. I moved around a lot as a kid, but I wanted to see it. I haven't been back here in over a decade, and I even made the trip down to the end of the cul-de-sac to see the same lot where I learned how to ride my dirt bike and tried to learn how to jump it and ended up breaking my nose in front of my whole neighborhood. So good times, good times, good memories, but it's time to get to it. It's time to head over to the car. Now, this is another area I'm familiar with because this is where my grandmother lived when I was a kid and when I was growing up before she moved down to Florida to live near us. So it feels like a coming home reunion going to get this car all right pulling up now these are my stomping grounds as a kid that was my grandmother's house right here on the corner it's crazy i remember when these trees were tiny anyway that was my grandma's house right there we used to play back in those woods all the time and then my cousin's house is right down here where the car is Hadn't made it very far. <laughs> so my cousin, who's had the car for the last 10 years, had taken the wheels off of it to get him sandblasted and he had the tires dismounted and got rid of them. So he had to track down some tires. They were a little bit on the small side. So I had to teach him the old fire trick of popping the tire on the bead. This is something I did a lot when I was younger getting tires stretched on wheels because we were just using what we could find behind the tire stores. So I haven't had to do it in a while, but luckily, the trick still works. There we go. 
we go. So with our first hurdle of getting the tires seated on the rims and the tires aired up out of the way, we can now move on to hurdle number two, getting them on the car and getting it off the jack stands for the first time in about 10 years. So unfortunately, we could not find the lug nuts. I mean, it's hard to find lug nuts when you took the wheels off a week ago, let alone 10 years ago. So we ran to the store, we got some new lug nuts. Now they only had three packs, so we got to get by with three on each wheel, but that's plenty enough to roll this thing down the driveway and get it on the trailer but we've got to find out first if it even rolls the car has been sitting for that long there's a good chance the brakes are seized up so now for the moment of truth lowering this thing off the jack stands getting it back on all four tires for the first time in a decade and finding out if mechanically the thing will roll or not or if we've got a bigger fight on our hands than getting those tires seated on the wheels so so far so good the rear came down pretty easy the front's going to be a bit more of a fight because we need really a taller bigger jack for something like this but we're just working with what we've got using my spare trailer jack that i keep in my trailer toolbox but with a little perseverance we got this thing on all four tires for the first time in a very very long time and it's time to see if it rolls and we can get it on the trailer. Make sure the brakes work. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was testing. Yeah, all right, brakes work. Move that, move that table, Troy, so he can cut it. Now we need to cut the wheel. Cut. <laughs> oh, it's going to go off. So with the biggest hurdle of just getting the car on all four wheels, off jack stands, out of the carport, and down to the trailer, out of our way, all we had left to do was to get this thing the rest of the way on the trailer. Now we had to get a little creative here as well because I don't have a winch for this trailer. I have one that I meant to put on before this trip, but I ran out of time. So we had to use a pair of ratchet straps and just ratchet this thing all the way up on the trailer, but we managed to get it on, get it pushed into position, and now all we've got to do is load up and get ready to head south back to Florida with this thing in tow. So we get the ramps in, get this thing strapped down nice and tight on all four corners. I also checked over all the body panels. This thing has been sitting for a while, so I don't know what might try to fly off when we finally bring this thing up to 80 miles an hour for the first time. And with that, we're ready to head home. So I said my goodbyes to my family that I haven't seen in just as long as I haven't seen the car. We got this thing turned around and are ready to head south back to Florida and take this thing out of here for the first time in over 20 years. This car has been in the same place the good majority of its life and it's finally time for a fresh start. It's time for this car to see something new and get resurrected and brought back to life. So we hit the highway. Fortunately, no parts flew off, but I did realize that one of my bearing caps had escaped at some point during the trip. So I made a quick pit stop at a parts store to replace it and re-grease my trailer bearings and then ran right into a dead stop traffic jam. What, what trip is complete without at least one stop traffic jam? So once we got through that, the trip was pretty uneventful. We found a cruising buddy, also towing a classic car to cruise with on the way home and then just settled in for a long drive into the night. Since there were some debacles, as expected, with getting the car ready and getting the car loaded up, we were running a little bit behind schedule, but fortunately, it's, it's a pretty quick drive, all things considered. So with a couple pit stops and some much-needed caffeine breaks, we made it back home in no time, and now we're ready to unload this thing off the trailer, push it into the shop, which is going to be its new home indefinitely.
There you go. All right, well, we made it back home. We got this thing pushed into the shop so we can start to dig into this thing, see what we're really working with first off, and hopefully get it back up and running, back on the road, back in its prime, and start enjoying it again. So the rundown on the timeline of this car, I got a more firm timeline. It has been over 20 years, so you can see our last registration here, our last uh, air inspection, 2000. So the year 2000 is when my grandmother stopped daily driving this because she got herself a minivan. So prior to that, again, this was her true daily driver. This was her only vehicle. It wasn't a Sunday driver or fair weather machine. Like this was her daily. As I said before, she would pick us up from kindergarten in it, me and my sister. And I remember because my sister always got the front seat. I never got the front seat. I always had to sit in the back and had to crawl out with the seat reclined. So that's why she ended up getting a minivan. Obviously it's a more logical choice if you're toting five grandkids around. And that's when this thing started to sit. So it was parked in the carport at my grandmother's house in the same spot for as long as I can remember. And it, it didn't really get driven, but you know, here or there for a few years, you know, my grandfather was sick, so he wasn't driving it. He also had, you know, this was technically his car, but this one was really my grandmother's. My granddad was more of an El Camino guy. When I was growing up, he had a dozen El Caminos in the yard. He had every type, ones with roll pans, ones with bench seats. He had a Choo Choo Customs El Camino, which is basically an El Camino with the Monte Carlo SS front end on it. That was really his baby. That was a really, really cool car. He had some older stuff too. He had owned a restoration business for a while. Uh, he was a big car nut, you know, I mean, and, that's pretty much where I get it from, you know. He passed it down to my dad. My dad grew up into cars, you know, had Trans Ams as a kid, souping them up, hot rodding them, and then he passed that on to me at an early age. And I mean, I've been in the cars since I was probably six years old. So, uh, point is, it didn't really get driven because of that. Once she stopped driving it, the car just sat around. And it sat there in that carport from around 2000 to 2012 when it moved right down the street to my aunt and uncle's house, my cousin's house, where it sat until we picked it up yesterday. So the car has been sitting roughly for about 20 years now. It's been sitting in that spot that it was in when we picked it up for about 10 years now. And it shows, I mean, you can see how absolutely filthy this thing is from sitting, but I think it's still in good shape. I'm, I'm really happy with what I've seen so far. So let me give you a tour of this thing show you what we're working with here. So drivetrain wise, this thing is bone stock. You know, as long as this car has been alive, it's never been modified. It's never been messed with. It still has all of the smog stuff, the smog pump, everything. Still the stock carburetor, stock exhaust. I mean, this thing is completely <laughs> bone stock, which is pretty neat. The fact that it's made it this long in its life without being modified. You know, a lot of these cars you find, they've got a 350 small box Chevy or a 383 stuffed in them. You know, at some point in their life, they've had an engine swap and they've got an MSD box and a different carburetor. So it's cool that this one's still all original. Moving to the interior, see by the door handle, limited edition. So it's missing the decals. I did order the decal set. They thought they had them. My granddad had bought them at some point to replace them, but uh, we couldn't find them. So I ordered some more. So the interior is my, this is what I'm most excited about. So the interior is mint, nothing's broken. There's one tiny little crack on the dash right there. Other than that, the interior is in phenomenal shape. And one of the things I always loved about this car as a kid, I don't know why I cared so much as a kid, but uh, the fact that it's a bucket seat car. So a lot of these and the El Caminos, a lot of them came with a bench seat and a column mounted shifter. Whereas this car has the buckets with the console mounted shifter. So that was always a big thing for me with these cars. I just didn't like bench seats. I always wanted one with the buckets and uh, this one's got the buckets. The steering wheel is pretty nasty. These steering wheels get really sticky when they sit. When I was a kid, I was helping my grandfather move an El Camino that had been parked in the yard somewhere and move it around the house. And he had me ride in it and steer it. And the steering wheel was just like this. I remember getting out, my hands were just covered in sticky goo. So. I'm hoping we can clean it up and keep this one, but if not, I'm sure we can find a replacement for it. Uh, so you can see mileage wise, I think it's got 145,000. It's only a five digit odometer, so it says 45,000, but pretty sure it's 145. But everything's still here. You know, all the panels are here, front and back, back seats, 
the headliner, the dome light, the sun visors, everything's still here and still in really good shape. I mean, we even have the factory cassette player. <laughs> How cool is that? Still have the factory cassette player, all our AC controls. We got this giant ashtray down here. Really the only thing aftermarket in here is this oil pressure gauge. And I mean, that's been in here since I was a kid. I remember always looking at the gauge. I thought it was so cool that it had a gauge in it. So, I mean, that thing's been around for as long as I have. Um, but yeah, interior, really good shape. Nothing really torn up at all in here. The carpet's pretty faded. Um, so it maybe could use some replacement or good cleaning, but that's, that's what I'm most excited about. The fact that the interior survived and is still in such good condition because it gets difficult to find a lot of these odds and ends if you're missing stuff. Uh, so moving back here, the body, the car doesn't have any rust. Can anyone tell me what these are? I remember these from when I was a kid. These have been on this key ring since I was a child. They look like keys, but I don't know. There we go, decided to put it in further. So yeah, looking back here, you know, we've got no rust down in these areas. If you look underneath, there's a bunch of surface corrosion from the car sitting, but there's no real rot. Nothing's actually rusting and falling apart. So I think we're in good shape there. The only rust is back here. So on the deck lid, you can see we've got some rust in this corner. This hasn't quite gone all the way through, but down here, it has gone all the way through. So this is where the water collects when it gets rained on. And again, the whole, this car is pretty much whole life. It's been in a carport nosed in so the back of the car was susceptible to rain so it's no surprise that we got some rust back here but fortunately it's only on the deck lid so worst case we replace the whole deck lid if we can't hack out the rust so you can see some of the factory stickers are still here the spare tire information still got the spare tire over here um, so all in all, you know, like I said, I didn't know what we were walking into when we went to get this thing. But like I said, I didn't really care because this car has so much sentimental value to me. I'm not big on sentimental value when it comes to cars. That doesn't normally happen for me. But this particular car has so much sentimental value for me. I wanted this car since I was a little kid, you know, sitting in it, pretending like I was driving, daydreaming of the day where one day I could have this car or a car like it and drive it. And uh, to, to finally have it is, it's a pretty, it's a pretty surreal feeling. I've got to be honest, you know, after all this time to finally have this car in my possession and to be in the position to be able to fix it up and, and get it back on the road and start enjoying it is, uh, it's pretty exciting. So that's the rundown of the car as it sits. We need to dig into it a little bit more and see what we've got to work with. I've basically got kind of two stages of plans for this thing. So stage one is going to be to get it back up and running and operational like it was before it was parked and sat 20 years ago. I want to get this thing back up and running as if it was the way it came off the showroom floor, the way it was when my grandmother was daily driving it and just see what it's like to cruise this thing around. You know, my very first car was an El Camino. It actually had the console shifter and everything in it. And it'll be cool to relive that through this car. So that's phase one. Phase two gets a bit more involved. You know, we're gonna turn this thing into more of a, a sporty, sporty car. Keep the stock body, keep the stock interior, but update the drivetrain in it, the suspension, go through it, make it a, a solid, you know, quick little car. And I know if my grandfather or my father were still around and they, they were able to be part of this, I think they would be into the same idea of doing that with the car. They weren't sticklers on cars, staying bone stock and original. And I think for this car, they'd enjoy seeing what I have planned for it. But for now, the goal is just to get it running. So we're gonna start there. So step one is check for signs of life. We need to see if the engine's frozen up. If it's not, if we can get it unstuck, we need to just see where we're at with the mechanicals. So I've got myself uh, another battery. I've got some valve cover gaskets because they have been off. We need to get those on. Got some plugs. There's some plug wires and some other parts in the back seat. Uh, so first step I think is gonna be to get this battery in and just see where we're at with the electrical system. See if we've got lights, see if all these those kinds of things work and then see if we can get the engine to turn over. So that being said, let's get into it. There's so much junk in here from the EGR system. I wonder how old this battery is. Before I put this in, tip this battery straight with the vacuum. Oh, we 
got a spark. Man, something's happening. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, we got an interior light. It's a good sign. Let's see if we got headlights. Oh yeah. Okay, so we got one bright out. Let's see if our tail lights are working. We got our side markers. We got tail lights. Let's go. We got license plate lights. Dang, all our lights are working. All right, that's a good sign. Our clock's ticking. You hear that? All right. Let's just, I'm just gonna bump the starter real quick. All right, the engine spins over. All right, sweet. That's all really good signs. That is great. Cool. That's what I wanted to know. So, engine's not locked up. We've obviously got to get in here and tidy all this up and get the valve covers back on, but it's not locked up, which means we might have a fighting chance of getting this thing running without having to go too deep down in there. The next thing I want to do is get this thing up in the air and see what's going on underneath, if there's anything that we're going to need to address there so we can get a parts list together and figure out what we're going to need to move forward with trying to start this thing for the first time in over two decades. So before we lift this thing up, one thing I want to show you, we did get a bunch more Garage Built Co. magnetic koozies in stock. We were out of stock for a little while. These things go really fast because they are super, super handy. If you work in a shop, you got metal all around you. Even if you're just anywhere that has metal nearby and you're trying to keep your drink cool, these things are a lifesaver. Just stick your drink right to the side of your toolbox, you're good to go. So we were sold out, but we got a bunch. We got a big order back in stock, so we have those. And we have some new GBCO Garage Built Co. black on black embroidered trucker hats. I am super happy with how these hats came out. I love them. Super sleek, super simple. Um, these are these are pretty neat. I'm really pleased with these. So we got those on the website as well as Garage Built Koozies, all of it in stock, as well as pretty much the rest of the merch. So if you're interested in any of it, go to garagebuiltco.com. I'll put a link down in the description. But that being said, let's get this thing up in the air and see what, if any, surprises are waiting for us underneath. Well, pretty much exactly what I was expecting under here based on just looking at it with the car on the ground. There is a ton of surface rust. Pretty much everything heavy steel is just coated in surface rust. But the good news is this isn't the concerning, serious type of rust. This is just clean it up and recoat it kind of rust. It's not through anything. It's not deep. It's literally just scaly surface rust. So that's not a big deal at all. Uh, again, this was never a northern car. It just got rusty from just sitting around and not getting driven. So all things considered, really not bad. Definitely gonna take some elbow grease to clean it all up. We might end up pulling the body off and sandblasting the frame and painting it, but there's no true rail rot anywhere. Everything is super solid. Everything seems good. So that's good news. I'm happy with that. Again, this is about what I expected for a car that's been sitting for 20 years. You know, even the drive shaft's rusty, but again, none of it is, is through rust or deep rust. It's just all, all scaly surface stuff. So well, it looks like we got a bit of a leak from the engine. So we'll have to check that out, make sure this thing's got oil in it. There is a ton of these dirt dauber nests in here. That's how you know this thing has been sitting. We got one there on the muffler. We've got big one there, another big one there. A ton back here in this crevice. They are, they're everywhere on this thing. Maybe a potential bird's nest back here. Uh, but as you can see, sheet metal wise, there's some surface rust here in the corners, but nothing's rusted through. You know, if there was 
serious rust, it would have gone through the sheet metal first, but we're just gonna have to clean it all up and seal this thing up well. But from here on out, you know, it's gonna get driven. It's not gonna be sitting. So definitely gonna take a little bit of wire wheeling and sandblasting, but we'll get it cleaned up looking brand new. Uh, one cool thing I noticed is check this out. So this thing has a sheet metal duct to the radiator, you know, like something you would see on an old NASCAR. Because obviously the bumper is only open up here, so they built, they made factory, you know, this sheet metal duct to duct air down to the radiator. I do got to say that kind of makes me want to go with the, the goal I had for this car when I was a kid. I had a whole build plan for this thing when I was, you know, 12 or 13 years old if I ever got my hands on it. And the, the phase two build plan today is very different than that, but I don't know, who knows. Like I said, first steps, get it running, driving, sort it out, and enjoy it for a little bit before we go crazy. But that being said, really the next thing is gonna be to go through it and try to get it running. So I've gotta get a few more parts in. There's a few things I'm missing that I'm gonna need, uh, but I wanna go through and do all the fluids, check everything over, plugs, plug wires. We need to take apart the carb, see what condition it's in, try to get it rebuilt, put it back on, and uh, see if we can't start this thing up. So at least the engine turns over, very happy about that. The electronics are all working, you know, it's not like we hooked the battery up and we've got nothing. You know, we've got power, we've got lights. So I think we've got a good start. I think hopefully if all goes well, we should be able to fire this thing up here soon. So that being said, we are out of time for this episode. But I do want to say thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of this thing. I am so stoked to have this car finally, to have this car here. And the fact that we have a place to be able to work on it and bring it back to life. Uh, it should be something really cool when we're done with it. I'm excited to show it to my grandmother once we get it cleaned up and back up and running. You know, her car from 20 years ago. See if she wants to take it for a spin. There's, there's a lot of fun stuff in store. But for now, again, we're out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. But thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.